Hi, welcome to the Bio 181 Tutoring Center videos. The topic of today's video is genetic drift and gene flow. So these are both mechanisms for evolution um, that we're gonna be talking about today. So um, to start off, we need to make sure we understand the definition of evolution. Evolution is defined as the change in allele frequencies in populations over time. And so um, a lot of people have misconceptions about what evolution is, but that is the, the straight up definition. And an important part is that it's in populations over time. Uh, populations, not individuals, evolve. So just always remember, individuals don't evolve. Because what's happening in evolution um, is somehow we get these new uh, alleles or allele frequencies the amount um, and the way that we get that is in these three mechanisms that we're going to be talking about today and so it's not the individual themselves because an individual can't change their allele frequency they can only um, only the population can change their allele frequency so if you remember back when uh, in other lecture videos I've talked about the Hardy-Weinberger you should have learned about hopefully the Hardy-Weinberg equation and Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium and that's just a way um, we measure the average heterozygosity or the amount of variation in a population because variation is really important um, but uh, when we talked about that we said that there was five conditions that had to be met or else Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium was not being met and that meant that there was evolution going on. So one of the, th the first two were no mutation and random mating. And so while um, they are important, they won't actually cause major changes in allele frequencies. Mutations are really important, but one mutation isn't going to change the entire allele frequency on a large enough scale to be considered evolution. Uh, Mutations are rarely rare and populations are so big that it's not a major so uh, mechanism for evolution. However, mutation, um, when mutations arise, then natural selection can act on those uh, mutations and then result in evolution. And then random mating, um, if we uh, don't have random mating, uh, we have non-random mating, it won't change the allele frequency. It may change the frequency of homozygous and heterozygous individuals but that's not changing our little frequency, which means we are not having evolution happen. So uh, the last three of the requirements for the Hardy-Weinberg equation are actually considered mechanisms for evolution. So the first one was natural selection, and that is the mechanism that Darwin proposed as the main mechanism for evolution. And this mechanism relies on variation in a population and it involves adaptive radiation. So we'll, we'll be talking more about natural selection in other videos and you'll get more into it as you continue talking about evolution. But the main idea is that we have a population and there is um, a need for survival because there's lots of organisms and limited resources or predators or something. And so certain individuals in the population, because there's variation, will have traits or alleles that are more beneficial to their survival than other individuals. And as a result, the individuals that have those traits will survive and be able to reproduce and pass them on to their offspring. Individuals that don't have those traits are more likely to die and not pass on their traits. And so over time, the majority of the population will begin to have those beneficial traits because the individuals that didn't have them um, died off. And so it's adaptation to the environment. Um, but the main thing that we're focusing on today are the two other mechanisms for evolution, uh, genetic drift and gene flow. So genetic drift is defined as chance events that cause change. So it's based on kind of probability, just the random chance that certain things are gonna happen. Um, and two important um, uh, types or applications of genetic drift are the founder effect and bottleneck effect. So the founder effect um, occurs when a part of the population is isolated from the other part of the population. And so the new isolated population is going to have um, different allele frequencies by chance than the um, mother population. And the mother population will also be affected uh, because we are taking um, or isolating some of those allele frequencies. And the bottleneck effect um, is basically we have some chance event, such as a flood or a fire, that removes um, a large population, a large number of the population, 
and as a result some alleles may be lost or um, greatly changed in the amount they had. So this is kind of a nice way to visualize it. If we have this bottle, it's full of all these different colored dots and the different colors represent different alleles. We have blue, black, and red, which might be kind of hard to see the blue. Um, and some chance event is causing them to be bottlenecked. And so only a couple make it through the fire or the flood. And just by random chance, only the red, um, only individuals with red and black made it through. It wasn't anything that they possessed that allowed them to survive. It was just random chance. The flood killed uh, all of these individuals and no blue individuals survived. And so now we have a change in our allele frequency because there's no more blue alleles and we have a different proportion of red and black. And so th some things to keep in mind about genetic drift is that genetic drift is more um, effective on small populations because small populations are more suscep suscep susceptible to these um, chance events and changes. So for example, if we have a population of 100 individuals, and populations can be a lot bigger than that, and 50 have one allele um, and 50 have the other, if there's some chance event that knocks out two of them, two of this allele, then it's not going to be that drastic of a change in the allele frequency. However, if we have a smaller population of about eight individuals, and four of this one frequency and four of the other, and we knock out the same two, now we have a drastic difference in the allele frequency. And so that's just, um, I guess I'm blocking it. That's just an example of how small populations can make a big difference. And some other things is that genetic drift, um, they're random changes and it can fluctuate from year to year. Uh, one year, by random chance, one allele might be more prominent in the population, and the next year, another allele. And that also is um, helpful when you have a smaller population. Uh, another thing is that genetic drift results in the loss of genetic variation. So when you have um, in this example, we lost the blue allele, and so now we have less alleles in our population and less genetic variation, which can um, become a problem because some of those traits may have been needed to keep the population alive um, because, remember, natural selection relies on variation. The last thing is that genetic drift um, may cause alleles to become fixed, certain alleles, and some of those alleles may be harmful and then be detrimental to the population. Because remember, if we um, lose genetic variation, that means we might be losing alleles within our population and as a result we may only be left with one allele for a certain trait and so that's the only allele that can be uh, spread throughout the population. And then gene flow. Gene flow is described as a transfer of genes into or out of a population and so this is common with immigration or immigration of members of populations to other populations. And so as they move from different populations they bring their genes with them and then they can mate and cause uh, differences in allele frequencies. But it doesn't always have to be the movement of individuals. As long as it's the movement of genes, it's considered gene flow. So an example of this is pollination. If you have two separate uh, populations of flowers, but there is some pollinator um, that uh, is transferring uh, genes from one population to the other, that's also gene flow. And it kind of an example of this is we're seeing this in humans. We have all these different populations of humans spread throughout the world. And they're kind of mostly separated, but now with our um, advanced technology and transportation, we are um, becoming more uh, mixed and diversified because of this, this transfer of genes. So that's uh, the three mechanisms for evolution. But one thing to keep in mind is that natural selection is the only mechanism that leads to adaptive evolution. So while these two are important, ultimately, um, after they've made their changes in allele frequencies, natural selection is still going to be acting on these um, and determining which individuals will then survive after that. And it's, it causes adaptive evolution. So evolu um, in individuals and popula not individuals, but populations adapting to their environment and to their circumstances to survive and be able to um, continue producing generations of offspring. And so that's all for today on genetic drift and gene flow. I hope this video was helpful. In other videos, we'll get more into um, natural selection and different types of selection. Thank you for watching.